Hi, I'm Diana Palm of dianapalm.com. I'm a medium author and spiritual healer. I spent my entire life communicating with spirits and obtaining proof of the afterlife. Today we're going to be discussing pet visits after death and some very important things that you should know. Make sure to watch to the end so that you can get the bonus. 10 signs your pet is visiting you from the afterlife. First of all, if you're a pet owner and an animal lover, you already know how amazing animals are and how they enhance our lives. It's no wonder we grow to love them so deeply. So starting off, there's a few things that you should know about pets. First of all, your pet chose you, even if it looks like it was the other way around. Oftentimes our pets show up when we're going through something very difficult in life or going through some sort of major life transition and suddenly a stray shows up or a friend of ours needs help with the care of their pet and that's how we incorporate them into our lives. And pets will usually stay around for a certain purpose or to teach you a lesson or teach you about unconditional love and when it's time to go, they're ready and they've served their purpose. So rest assured that when it's time for your pet to go, no matter how that is, whether it's an accident or old age or disease, that it actually really is their time to go and that their lesson with you has already been fulfilled. When it's time for a pet to die, I have never heard them communicate that they need more time. Pets do not have the same emotional issues that humans do. So they're completely living in the present moment without the past and without the future. So when it's time for them to go, it's a very, very easy decision that is not fraught with emotional ties and obligations. After sharing my little story with my dog, Dexter, I'm going to give you some tips to help you move through the end of life process with your own pet. Meet Dexter. Dexter was a rescue and was much older than we were actually told when we adopted him. So he had some health issues, but it really didn't matter to us because we fell in love with him anyway. The first day we had him, he chased a squirrel right up the tree. If we ever let Dexter off the leash, he would just run away. He turned and look at us like we didn't matter, he didn't hear us, and he'd just come back in his own sweet time. So he was very stubborn. Well, we finally found an off-leash dog park where Dexter could run and we began walking every day by taking Dexter to the dog park and getting lots of exercise and getting us out of the house. Even in the very, very cold weather in the middle of winter in Minnesota and Wisconsin, Dexter made me and my daughter get used to constant slobber. We got used to water being spilled all over the floor. We actually had to pull grassy dingleberries from his butt from time to time <laughs> and try to get the frozen poop out of his mouth in winter. But Dexter, our big unapologetic dog, taught us many things. When it was time to move, Dexter began to prepare for his departure. He had good days and bad days, so it was challenging for me to find out if it was actually time to put him down. Then finally one night, on his way to lay down beside my bed at night, he collapsed on the kitchen floor. As I laid holding him in a puddle of his own urine, he looked at me and his spirit told me that he was ready to go. My daughter didn't get the same message, so she waited another day until he finally communicated to her also that he was ready to go. Knowing that animals absorb emotions from their owners, we put on a brave front and were careful not to project pain and sadness toward him or the thought of losing him. We decided to make his last day the best one yet. It began with a trip to the do-it-yourself dog wash studio where he got all the best treatments available, including a vacuum and blow dry. We cooked him steak for dinner and took him for a walk as far as he could comfortably go. He even got a treat and a new bone that day. We gave him so many hugs and kisses that I believe it truly was his best day ever. We didn't cry until his spirit left his body, at which time we couldn't stop from crying and left a flood of tears on the vet clinic floor. Dexter's spirit left and he felt very, very proud of ha being such a good dog for us. When we returned to the house, there was an obvious big presence missing. Our big, goofy, slobbery dog was not there. The very next morning, I heard the clinking of Dexter's dog collar. I even spotted him out of the corner of my eye several times that following week. Then he came to visit me in a dream. So as a loving pet owner, here are some tips that I have for you while you're going through the process. 
Talk with your pet before you actually make the decision to put them down. Wait until you get some sort of sign. Make sure that your whole entire family is in alignment with this decision. Make it the best day ever. Make sure you don't project your sadness onto your pet before you put them down. Stay centered and stay calm. Otherwise your pet is going to worry about you and they'll be filled with so much anxiety about the process. Then afterwards, you go right ahead and cry. That is actually the best and quickest way through the grief process. Feeling everything allows you to heal your grief faster. And then you can begin to listen and pay attention for all the wonderful signs that your loved one never left you. So if you're still with me, here's your bonus. Here are the 10 signs that your pet is visiting you from the afterlife. You may actually feel your cat or dog in spirit come and snuggle with you on the sofa or in bed at night. You may just be staying in the kitchen doing dishes and then all of a sudden you'll feel their little body rub against your leg. You may hear the bell on their collar or their dog tags rattling. You may even hear a bark or a meow or other familiar sound from your pet. Pay some extra attention to their pet toys. Sometimes you'll know that you put them away and you'll still find them out in the middle of the living room because they're coming over to still play with them. You may have dream visits where your pet is happy and youthful and, and feeling really, really healthy again. You may think that you saw your pet out of the corner of your eye, and that's because you did. You may even get a whiff of your pet or another familiar scent associated with your pet, such as particular cat or dog food. The other pets in your home may be starting to act a little bit odd. They may be staring at things that aren't there. They might be chasing things, or they might suddenly start some new habits of laying in a different place. Rest assured, your pets can see your spirit pet. And finally, pay attention to any animals that are sent to you suddenly during this process. When you're grieving, you are most likely going to be sent another little furry friend to love and take care of because they're coming to you for a purpose and they know that you're hurting. So if something like that suddenly shows up, understand that that might actually be arranged by the pet that just left you and this is gonna be your new best friend. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, comment down below, and write spirit if you'd like to hear more about the spirit world. Thanks for coming, you guys. Have a great day.